Okay, welcome back. Um, so the purpose of this video is to do a demo, um, actually seeing us run the MapReduce pattern on MongoDB. All right, so this is basically a live example um, to show how it works and to see it actually implemented. Okay, um, for the details of how Mongo, how the MapReduce pattern works, you'd want to look back at the previous video to understand the fundamentals. Okay, but now we'll actually see it in action. All right, so we're going to run the MapReduce pattern, and we're going to run it on the Enron uh, database. And as you see here, I've already kind of uh, got on the MongoDB server, and I've switched over to the Enron database. If I say show collections here, so you can see that we've got um, the emails collection is the one that we're going to use. Remember, so that Mongo is basically designed that we have different databases. Each database has a number of collections. Each collection has a number of documents. Okay, so we're going to use the, um, the emails um, collection and if we did a uh, let's kind of just look at one example of a single um, a single email or single email document here um, in the collection we can see that we've got some text information right that's really like the body of the email um, as well as a whole lot of other information who sent it who received it etc okay all right um, so let's let's go ahead and let's actually implement the map reduce pattern first step is I'm gonna basically uh, let's define the map okay and this is all JavaScript okay it's all JavaScript code if you're familiar with JavaScript it's gonna help you um, if not there's tons of documentation online if you kind of if anything seems confusing to look up um, and I'm gonna basically create a variable and I'm calling it map you can call it anything you want and that is a function it's a reusable block of code okay and uh, I'm gonna create another uh, variable and I'm gonna call it words right because what I'm gonna do is I'm writing a map reduce uh, query that I wanted to count how many times each word is used across the entire database all right so first thing I have to do is I want to take all of I want to basically take the text of the document and if I say this text, this is being run on every single, basically means that document, right? And this will get called on every single document in the database. So let's say this, this text, right? The text of that, of any given, um, any given email. I'm gonna make all the text lowercase, and I'm gonna define each word as being anything that has a space between it, okay? So I'm gonna split the words, the text of the email based on any sort of spaces, okay? And then I'm going to create a loop, and I am going to loop for every single word that is in the email. And then a key thing is every map needs to output um, an emit. Right. What emit does is emit is going to take is going to basically be like, what are we mapping? What's the key value pair? Okay. What's the key value pair? The key is on the left hand side. We're going to say the word, right? The word is on the left hand side. Okay. For so every word is going to get emitted, right? And then one is on the right hand side is the value. One because what we're basically doing is every time we map something, we're going to eventually want to count. Right, and say, all right, we found a map, we found a key, we want to add one. All right, and we'll see that part when we get to reduce. And I'm going to kind of close that off. So we've, we've written our map function. If I type map here, you'll see it kind of come up. I can, you know, output it and take a look at it again. So let's look at the, so now we're going to implement the reduce. I'm going to create another JavaScript variable called reduce. This time the function takes uh, parameters and it's going to take the unique key and then uh, basically all of the values that um, correspond to that unique key okay and we're going to count every the number of values that there are okay because that'll tell us how many times that that key or that word has been used across all the emails in the entire database This line is a little bit difficult to read. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, all it's really saying is I want to continue to add, I just want to add up the, how many times that, how many values there are. It just gets me for, um, it's, it's basically going to tell me how many uh, times, uh, 
how many values there are based on each key. That's all. That's all it does. It's kind of a condensed way of doing it, and then I'm going to output that count. All right. Once again, if I type reduce, I can see the value. All right. I can see the function. All right. So now we've specified map. Right. We specified reduce. Let's actually go ahead and run our query. And I'm going to tell it basically it's like the current database. We're using the emails collection, and we're going to use map reduce. And I've got to tell it how we're defining map, how we're defining reduce. Those are the two JavaScript variables that we uh, we just defined. And then this last thing that looks a little bit funky, but basically all this does is it says I want the output to come out to the screen, right? I don't want it to be saved somewhere. By default. MongoDB might assume that you're going to generate an awful lot of data as an output from one of these queries, okay? And it will not just, it doesn't want to just send it all to the screen because that could be very inefficient and, and not really a good way of doing anything with the values that return. Um, by doing this inline, it's basically going to say the output, throw it to the screen so everybody can see it rather than store it somewhere in the database. All right. And we can see that there is a... Um, we're, we're having a bit of an error. Okay, and so um, I noticed there's a bit of an error. We took a look at map, and what I can notice here is based, it's telling me that there's no method split near lowercase, and what I could see is that I forgot, because two lowercase is a function, I actually need to do uh, open and close parentheses there. So I'm gonna kind of zip ahead here and actually change that so that we can see that there's an open and close parentheses and fix map. And what, probably the easiest way to do this is actually just to up arrow, and then I can kind of go back to where there was the mistake. I'm adding open and close parentheses, fixing map, right? So now if I show map, I can see that it's, it's fixed. And let's try to run that query again. Now, this is processing an awful lot of data. So I'm running the query right now. Um, because it's running over such a large amount of data, it takes some time, right? The server's processing it. Um, it could be that uh, in, in other, depending on how it's set up, in this case we're really running it on a single machine. Here's the output coming uh, now. Um, but it's taken some time to process and we'll see is the reason why is there's about a million and a half um, unique uh, words, or a million and a half words in the, in the database. And that was reduced down to um, basically 300,000. Okay, the reason there's still so many words is because we're counting like new line characters and things like that. We're gonna see a lot of the weird ones show up at the end, right? So like these are all, this is basically if you're hitting re return, enter, okay? And it's all sorted alphabetically, so we're seeing a lot of the weird ones um, at the end. And we can see that it took about 16 seconds to compute and that it was successful, okay? Well, that's a lot of data. What if we wanna change this um, to just be able to output for like count the number of some unique words? Enron's famous for, um, or infamous maybe I should say, for um, fraud and, and there, we can see that there's a lot of emails that um, basically have s indications of what different, what leadership knew at different times during the scandal. And so maybe we want to just look for um, certain keywords. Maybe we're trying to count the times that fraud has been used in a, across the database or the word jail. All right, so let's look how to do that. Um, and I'm going to basically implement map again. I'm going to rewrite it this time so that it kind of the format looks nice so we can all see it. We're going to look at the map function and what we're going to see in this case is I'm going to do the same thing as before initially. So far it looks exactly the same as what we were originally writing. You know, that was, so it's iterating over every word. And now I'm actually gonna put an if statement. And I'm gonna basically say that if words, the current word equals jail, or fraud, only those words we want to omit, right? So we're not mapping anything else. only those words and we'll see this in action in a second okay let's run this again 
And what we can see here is the end result is, as we can see the word fraud is being used, is used 17 times across the database and the word jail um, three times. A lot faster because there's a lot less to process. We're only reducing it down to, um, to two um, unique keys. And we only emitted a small number, we only emitted 20 items, okay, because there's a lot less that we got emitted from the map stage, okay. So there's the results in action of the map reduce pattern. Uh, you might want to watch the video a couple times and try it out yourself on the server to get familiar with it. Um, thanks for watching and have a good day.